Do you want to understand how to use the Windows API with VBA? And I mean really understand? Then this video is for you. Hi, I'm Philip from CodeCabinet.com and I decided to do a series, not just one video, a whole series of at least four, but probably more videos on the Windows API. And in this video, we are basically closing in on the topic with some background information and a really, really simple example. And I try to really keep these videos to 10 to 15 minutes and this is a challenge so let's start right away so um what is the windows api the windows api is the programming interface to microsoft windows it was included in all versions of windows it is still in there and it only gets modernized and extended it is very, very rare that old functions are removed. And I think I've only seen that with very, very old functions, which are basically obsolete for decades. And for that reason, it is very resilient and reliable. So if you directly use any Windows API functions, then they will basically be usable for a very, very long time. And the Windows API offers a vast functionality. Basically, everything that is built into the Windows operating system can be reached via the Windows API. And here's the programming reference page for the Win API. And this gives a quick overview of, of the top level technology categories here. And I will not go any deeper here from this uh, path, but I will quickly show you the documentation of probably the simplest of the Windows API functions, and that is sleep. And that just makes the execution of your code do nothing, basically sleep for a def defined time period. And you see a super short description of this function. Then you see the syntax, which is in C++. And I will copy that because we are going to need that in a couple of minutes. Then you see the description of the parameters. And most important is usually um, next to the parameters, the remarks section, because this is basically the real explanation on how the function works. But that's not something we will dive in here today. But we will quickly look at this section, the requirements and the interesting bits here is the minimum supported version for client and server that is in this case Windows XP, but the sleep function was available earlier, but they did a little change in Windows XP and they only document the new behavior of the function, not the old one. But if you implemented it uh, in earlier versions, it will work all the same for us interesting is also the library and DLL or one of those uh, sections and it's kernel 32 here. That is the Windows library in which this function is implemented. And we will see why that is relevant now. I close the browser and move over to this VBA window where I will use the sleep API function in VBA. I paste in the definition copied over from the documentation and this is 
C++, so our VBA environment tells us, oh, this is not valid, I don't like this, I don't understand this. So let's make it a comment for our reference. What we need to do if we want to use a function from the Windows API, we need to use the declare statement and that is combined with our um, scope mod access modifiers, public and private. And then uh, the next is the declare keyword. And declare basically tells us we only declare a function here, but the implementation is somewhere else. And let me write that in a second. By the way, all the functions I will use and show here in this course will be 64-bit compatible. And for that reason, I use the pointer safe keyword. And maybe I will do um, an in-depth view on 64-bit compatibility, but uh, I'm not sure about that. It's not really planned. Um, if you're interested in that, uh, look up there. I will put in a link to a conference presentation where I spoke about that in detail. So this code here using the pointer safe keyword will work in Access 2010 and newer. It will not work in older versions. So, and if you are on an older version, really consider updating. But um, now, next is the function name. And that is, no, it's not the function name. We need to tell it what it is. And this is actually not a function. It is a sub procedure. And this is, um, this is, caused by the void declaration here, because that is where usually the return value of the function would be specified. And here it is void, which means nothing, and a procedure that returns nothing at all is a sub procedure because it has no return value. So now comes the magic here. We need to specify a library, which is done with a lib keyword. And yeah, I made a mistake because it needs to be kernel 32, of course. And this is basically the library name. And you can just put in the file name without extension. You can also write a kernel 32 DLL but it's just fine writing it this way. And then we need the argument which is specified here. And then you need to know that this is a long in VBA to find out. Well, um, there are two options to basically translate these data types and declarations. Um, one is if you go to my website, there's a download file of a PDF where I think I mentioned the most important data types and how to translate the C++ data type to VBA. There's also a downloadable file by Microsoft which contains the whole declarations of these API functions and I will put a link to the download in the video description as well. So you don't need to um, know this and uh, how to write these declaration yourself. You can copy them for many API functions, but they are not all in there, but those that are the most interesting will be. So we need to add the as long data type definition here. And there is something important. You will probably hardly do that when writing VBA code, but with the Windows API, it is 
very important you need to specify the passing mechanism for the data types because if you do that wrong you will crash the VBA and access environment and with crash I do not mean there is a nice message box oh there's the something incorrect and the compiler cannot work or a runtime error I mean it will shut down like and it's gone. This is something that might happen with Windows API declarations if they are incorrect. They will just blow away your access instance. And for that reason, it is a very good idea to save frequently if you are really working with Windows API functions. They are perfectly safe once you figured out the correct declaration and they are working. But while you're writing and trying out API declarations, you might kill your access process more than once. Okay, let's continue here. I, I see it's already hopeless to stick to the 15 minute limit. So I declared this function. I will quickly show you how it works and I hope it does work. I call this the demo sleep and I will quickly print out the time because it's hard to see when the code does nothing for uh, some time. So I need to visualize that for you. So I put in two lines before sleep, after sleep, and I already put the immediate pane in place that we don't forget that. And now I can call the sleep function exactly as I would call any normal VBA function that we have written in our project. And we need to specify how long the process or the, the thread rather that executes the code should sleep. And now I run this and you see the first line down here in the immediate pane already. And here's the second line. So you see these two time values are apart five seconds. And that is what these 5,000 milliseconds I pass to the sleep function are. Now let's quickly go back to the definition or rather declaration of our sleep function. There are some more details I would like to show you. And for a minute I will rename this function. Yes, I will rename it. Um, and I will show you the alias um, statement here. This is um, the, well, there is a lot conf of confusion around the workings of the alias statement with API declarations. Because if we access developer read alias, we think of aliases in SQL statements. And although the alias keyword here in the Windows API declaration has a similar function. It basically works the other way round than our aliases in, we be, uh, in SQL. Because the declaration of our function name, which I changed to API sleep, that is what the function will be named in our VBA project. That is our name for the function. That is totally up to us. It's flexible. And let's, let's do it. in a more understandable way. Let's quickly save that. So I renamed the function to coffee break. I can do that. I can name that 
the way I want. But the alias here, this needs to be the name of the function in the kernel library or if it's a in whatever library the function is declared, but it needs to be the original name. And the original name is case sensitive. What is also basically irrelevant is the name of the arguments. I can rename that dw milliseconds into coffee break time. The relevant bit is the order of the arguments, but the names are irrelevant. Well, they are relevant for you to understand their meaning, but beyond that, technically they are irrelevant. And so we can just call this function and pay attention, I change the sleep alias, the, the original name, to a lowercase s, just to prove a point. I go over to my module here and rename that to coffee break, the function call, remove that and run this. And here is an error, can't find DLL entry point sleep in kernel 32. That is the VBA runtime telling us the sleep function is not known in the kernel 32 library because it is case sensitive and I wrote it with a lowercase s. So if I go back here and change that to the correct uppercase s and go back to my function call here and run this again, now you see it works again. So that is basically the functionality of declarations of Windows API functions. And that is the end of today's video. Thank you for watching. Bye bye.